Hey, good morning. Well, my wife, Joy, is normally the most patient person who I know, the patience of Job. I mean, just relaxed and chill in the moment until and accept yesterday. And I love it because I'm usually the one who um, doesn't do great in this area. And so yesterday, it was her turn. She asked me a question that makes most men or many men tremble. Um, she asked me, it was Saturday morning, and she said, would you mind driving me to Joanne Fabric? And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, you should have seen first service. There were men that looked horrified. That's like the worst thing you could possibly get asked, you know, by your wife or significant other there on a Saturday morning. And, um, and I said, well, sweetheart, here's what I'll do. I would be more than happy to drive you to the parking lot of Joanne Fabric. And I will stay in the truck and um, I will circle the parking lot like I'm flying a 737 waiting for permission to land. And as soon as you're done, I'll swoop in. I'll even stop the truck, pick you up and uh, take you with me. She said, all right, deal. So I took her dropped her off at Joanne Fabric, and it was as you would expect on a Saturday morning. I mean, it was chaos. People bombing into the parking lot, dodging people, got her out. It took forever. Ever Now, she was on a mission for children's ministry here at the church. So it was a mission from God, you know, in a way. They had a lamb that's part of their Christmas decorations. And somehow it burst asunder. It split open. And this stuffed lamb had stuffing that was no longer stuffed inside the lamb. She had needle and thread. She was going to buy stuffing. She was putting it back together again for the decorations. And so I knew that this would be a successful trip. She texted me and finally and said, this line is taking forever, dot, dot, dot. She's not a dot, dot, dot kind of a lady. She normally just uses emojis or periods or exclamation points, but it was an ellipsis kind of day. And a few minutes after that, I got another text and she said, I'm leaving. And she came storming out the door. Now, no one else would know she was storming except me because she's gentle and she's polite and she's, oh, she's a lady. She got in the car and I said, what in the world happened? She goes, the line was long. And I said, yeah. And she goes, it was full of 50 something year old women. And... <laughs> So I stopped for a second and I did the math. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, and, you know, and looked at her and she goes, I know we're a lot. That's what she said. And um, she goes, take me to Michael's. So I did. And she went up the street to Michael's and had a successful mission. But I mean, even the holidays and the pace and the hustle and bustle, it got my wife off her game. And if it can do that, it can get any of us off our game. We are going right into the middle of it. We got Thanksgiving in a week and a half. We have Christmas coming up in just a little bit over a month. And the danger for you and the danger for me is we're gonna be robbed of the joy of living in the moment now. Now is the only moment where you can worship. It's the only moment you can love. It's the only moment you can connect. It's the only moment you can invest. Now is the only moment you can live your purpose but it just seems like the deck is stacked against us living in the moment. I've been thinking about a passage of scripture from the Psalms, and this is gonna be a short message today. So that'll be some of you, you are already smiling at me going, yeah, we don't believe you. Wait and see. Uh, we have communion coming up in the second half of our message or second half of our time together. So this is more of a thought. We've been you know, doing a lot of work over the last eight weeks, the seven deadly sins. I mean, we've been getting pretty deep. We've been applying a lot of scripture. Today is gonna to be an important reminder of thought. And it's something that I have needed. I believe it's something you need. So just bear with me. Let's walk through this, apply this, and see if it might will change your perspective. This passage of scripture has been in my mind, this psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. I'll say it again, because at, now at the beginning of my teaching time, this first little part of the psalm is where I want us to, to really focus. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And then I want you to zoom in on one particular word that you may not expect in this beginning of this passage. The word is. And in my mind, it's an acronym. The Lord is good. Now, the Lord was good yesterday and he will be good tomorrow. There's no doubt about that. But the day we experience his goodness, the moment we experience his goodness is now. So here's an acronym. Maybe you can remember it. Maybe it will be helpful for you as we pick up the pace, the speed between now and the end of the year. I, the I in is, is I am here right now. The S, 
so is the Lord. I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm here with you. And this moment is the only moment that God has guaranteed us. Hebrews tells us that Jesus himself sustains your life, that the heartbeat that you feel in your chest or your neck, that the next breath that you take is willed to you and given to you by Jesus Christ as a gift. And the only gift that we are guaranteed is the gift of the moment that we are experiencing right now. I am here now. So is the Lord. Now I want you to do this with me. Just an exhale because this helps. Don't exhale on the person next to you, all right? We're getting into flu season. Just exhale toward me. There's enough of a barrier here. We'll be fine. Take in a deep breath. Are you ready? Some of you didn't do it. Now is where God meets me. Are you worried about tomorrow? Are you preoccupied with yesterday? Let's move on. By the way, if you want sermon notes, if you want the notes of our teaching time, there are plenty of notes. All of the notes are in the app, as Pastor Jared mentioned in the announcements. And you can download a PDF. You can follow along. You can take notes along with it if you'd like to. Uh, but I want to encourage you to do that because today is a day that's going to help center us back exactly where it is that we need to be. You ever seen an hourglass, by the way? Everyone's seen an hourglass. This is the very best hourglass that you can buy um, on Amazon, less than $20. And so... This is an hourglass, and I'm just going to start this hourglass, and I'm just going to let it go for a second and um, give you a very profound quote. Like sands in the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Some of you remember that from Days of Our Lives, the soap opera. Some of you, tell me, admit it, you remember it from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Remember that when you don't remember that where, okay, never mind. Some of you have to remember that. We're going to let this run. It's going to run we're going to be fine. Okay. Now, do you like studies? Do you like statistics? Many of you have a device in your possession right now that's keeping you from being current in the now. And that device, that temptation is your cell phone. Now, I'm pro cell phone. It keeps me organized. It lets me know what I'm supposed to do next before I go to bed at night. I look at my to-do list, make sure nothing's in red. If it's in red, I have to make sure I know exactly when I mean, I get obsessive over it, but it's also a toy. It's also an entertainment device. It's also a distraction. A recent study has shown that the average person looks at their phone, and some of you have already looked at your phone nine times since I've started talking. I'm not upset about it. My kids can look at their phone, watch TV, carry on a conversation all at the same time, not fully present in any of those things, but fully, well, they're present in a way in all of those things. I get we live in a different society. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just suggesting that maybe we take this seriously. A study has shown that the average person looks at their phone, their smartphone, 2,617 times in a day. And in case you're wondering, we did the math. There are only 1,440 minutes in a 24-hour day. And I believe that one of the things that distracts us and takes us out of moments, even moments like right now, is the device that we have in our own pockets or purses or hands or laps that takes us back into the future, that takes us forward into tomorrow, that just takes us into a distraction where we catch a glimpse of somebody else's lives. And as I've been thinking about this in my own life, even in my own relationship with my wife, the most important relationship that I have beyond the Lord is that sometimes what we call quality time together, when we're together, when we're alone, sitting on a couch, watching TV, hanging out. It's just joy and me and our phones. And exchanging memes is not the same thing as being together, being fully present. Sometimes we treat God like we treat people closest to us and we exchange memes in our relationship with God but don't ever really connect and don't ever really settle. And I want us to connect and I want us to settle in our hearts and in our minds right now. Jesus went to Jericho off and on. Two very significant times we read about Jesus going to Jericho. 
One time we read about Jesus going into Jericho and Jesus healed a person who desperately needed to be healed. Another time we read about Jesus going into Jericho, he met a man named Zacchaeus. And that's a story familiar to you. We've talked about this a couple of times, but I wanted to zoom in on something that maybe you've missed because we didn't focus on it the last time we've talked about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a person who was often overlooked by good church people, often ignored, talked about, not talked to. Jesus was busy. He was on his way to something important. Can anybody argue with how important the cross is, the resurrection, the trial, torture, being put to death and rising again, the culmination of his purpose, God, 100% God, 100% man, Jesus here moving toward what it is that God the Father had put him on earth to accomplish. Busy for a purpose with a reason. Everyone would say or understand if he was living in tomorrow. You ever have something bad coming up or difficult coming up? You know it's coming up, a surgery, a test, something you're facing. At some point, you know, you dread it and you go slow and then you get close and you're just, you just want to go as fast as you can just to get it over with and get it behind you. Nobody would blame Jesus if that's the way he was and the way he was thinking in this moment, but he wasn't doing that at all. And that's what's so amazing to me because Jesus managed to be fully present in the moments that God the Father had given him. And the moment was the only time he could accomplish his purpose. And the story reminds me of this. Jesus entered Jericho and he was passing through. He was busy. He was otherwise occupied. He had stuff that was important to do. A man was there a significant man in organized crime, but insignificant as far as the religious were concerned. Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector. He was wealthy. He was a little bit of a thug. People didn't really like him. They talked again about him, but not to him. But he wanted to see who Jesus was, but he was short, so he couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead, climbed into a sycamore tree since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, not before he reached the spot, not after he passed the spot, but when Jesus arrived at that moment, at that time, being fully present, he saw Zacchaeus and he said, come down immediately. I must stay at your house. I must stop the journey toward what we would consider his purpose and realize that God had placed Zacchaeus on his way and not in his way. Thanksgiving was coming, Christmas was coming. We got family, we got friends, we got stuff, we got shopping, we got, Jesus ignored it all. And he realized that that was the point right there. So he went to Zacchaeus' house. He was passing through, but fully present. You and I can't be happy. We can't love others and we can't serve Jesus unless we are living in the now. There's a Harvard study, another statistic. And in this study, the study suggests that 47% of you, I love sharing this. I shared this at a funeral recently. You may have even heard this. 47% of you right now have your heads in a different place than your rear ends or your feet. And I don't mean you have a severed head. I mean, your mind has already wandered. Are you with me right now? Are you thinking about lunch? Are you thinking about what happens next? Are you thinking about your schedule? Are you thinking about, are you here with me now? 47%, if statistics are accurate, 47% of you have already left the building, even though your bodies are still here. Think about that with the people closest to you and the time that we call quality time with our spouses, girlfriend, boyfriend, children, close friends, church friends, with Jesus himself. How many times has your mind left when your body is still there? There are two things, two thoughts, I think, that keep us from being fully present in the moment. The first one's really simple, common to all of us, and that is the when that. When that happens, then I'll be able to be happy. I'll be able to be in the moment. I'll be able to be present. 
When, if you're a kid, right? When I get to high school, then things will change. When I graduate from high school, then I'll be able to. When I go to college, when I graduate from college or when I get a job or when I get a promotion or when I get married or when I get, there's always a when, there's always a carrot. There's always this goal. When I take the trip, when I buy the boat, when I get the new house, when the kids get out of the house. And we find sometimes that there's something around the corner that keeps us out of the present moment and we're living with the, when that happens, and we never really experience who and what we're called to be in the first place. Well, the second thing is the what if, and that is also common to all of us. And that's the anxiety of realizing that maybe we're not doing what we need to do right now so that tomorrow will be okay. And so we second guess, we're hypervigilant. We, we look at everything and everyone, to just, and, and it's anxiety and it's frustration and it's fear. And it pulls us away. There's something around the corner that keeps us from being fully present in this moment today. So I've had the hourglass here. It's a 30 minute hourglass. There's two things I want you to notice about the hourglass. Number one, once the sand starts, once the days of your life begin, you can't stop it. It just keeps slipping away. Now you can think of that in a real negative way. You can let it stress you out. Or you can embrace the reality of the fact that each day is a gift. And being fully present in the moment allows our days to have meaning. And as they pass, we've discovered more of our purpose and we're more at peace. The second thing I want you to notice is that once they're gone, we can't put them back. How many things might you be overlooking today, dreading today, seeing as inconveniences today that maybe you'll miss tomorrow? What do we miss by not being in the moment? It's weird, but I think about it when I get in the shower. And I think about weird things at weird times. Maybe you do too. But for the last two and a half years, every time we go visit my son in his house, we share a bathroom with my favorite little, almost three-year-old, Emery Lorraine. And um, she leaves stuff in the tub. I mean, she leaves baby sharks. She leaves uh, uh, duckies. She leaves things stuck to the wall. They blow bubbles. They sing. They make noise. And she doesn't clean up after herself. So when I go get in the shower, she usually has had her bath, you know, with Grandma Joy and her mama the night before. I got to clean this stuff up. And if you don't clean this stuff up, you're going to, I mean, you'll fall, it'll kill you. That's dangerous in there. And I don't get upset about it. But I remember thinking, oh, I remember opening the shower curtain. There it is again. All over the place. Somebody's got to teach her to clean up after herself, right? She's three. And you know what's going to happen? One day there's not going to be any more stuff in the shower. And everybody's going to look back on that time and miss when she was the age where baby shark sings to you, where something blows bubbles and there are tripping hazards everywhere you go. Life is full of moments like that. And we project past them. We overlook them. The author of Psalms he tells us that the Lord is good. His love endures forever. Now let's read this together. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever forever who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. And then moving forward to verse 26, give thanks to the God of heaven because his love endures forever. But now is the moment where you experience God's love. 
Now is the moment where you can share God's love. Now is the only moment that you can be fully present and live your purpose. So what's keeping you from that? The Lord is good. You don't have to say this out loud. Just say it with me in your mind if you're joining with us online. I am here. My mind, my body, me. I am here. So is the Lord. And you can worship. The only moment you can truly be thankful and express thanks is now. Now you can be thankful for what happened yesterday. You can be thankful for what you believe will happen tomorrow. But now is the only moment where you can truly express thanks. And there's a day we've set aside as a nation that's dedicated toward expressing thanks. This is a worship service where we're gonna celebrate communion together and it's designed and, and organized around the idea of being in this moment and expressing thanks. So I want to ask you, and this can be rhetorical. In the service earlier, it wasn't rhetorical. We all just hollered it out all over the room, but online it doesn't translate well. What is it you're thankful for to God right now in this moment? Count your blessings, name them one by one. Take a second. Who are you thankful for right now? Not myself, not karma, not good luck not hard work. I'm thankful to the Lord for he is good. And how is his goodness being expressed in your life right now? I wanna pray for you. We're gonna come back in a few minutes after Brian and some friends who he's invited to be part of the band today. Lead us in in a worship set where we sing our thanks to the Lord. And then we'll show God how thankful we are by celebrating and participating in this communion we've prepared for you. Father, thank you for my friends and I pray that you would be with them. Ground us in this moment now. For those watching online, for those who are here fully present in this room, I pray that we can embrace the reality that your love endures forever. But now is when we can experience your love. Now is when we can show your love and share your love. Now is when we can connect with you. Now is when we can tell you thank you. We are thankful people. We're grateful for who you are and for what you do in and for us and through us every single day. We wanna tell you that through these songs and we tell you that because of Jesus and it's in his name I pray, amen.